Hey guys, Zomfox here. So, if you saw the video yesterday, you know I said something about how we hadn't gotten any news in the USFL in a while. It had been like a week and a half or two weeks since the last thing we found out, until the player selection meeting. Well, since that one day ago video, there have been three major announcements that have come out. So I'm going to have timestamps to all three of them. The first one, which is this timestamp, is going to be for when the actual kickoff is. The next one is going to be for the head coaches that revealed, and the last one is for a college program that they're doing. So let's get started. If you go to the USFL main site, usfl2.com, I have the link in the description, they will now have a countdown, which, if you head on the day I'm uploading this, will have 98 days left and something hours, something minutes, something seconds till kickoff, which is April 16th, 2022. That is pretty cool to hear about that we now know the official date. People thought it was going to be mid-April, and that's basically as mid as you can get. So as for the next part, we're going to be looking at the head coaches. So, this article is on Fox Sports, and you can find it on the USFL site. It's basically like a continuation of the article we did before, talking about the TV deal. What you need to know for the USFL in 2022, four head coaches announced. We're officially 100 days away from kickoff of the United States Football League. On Thursday, it announced their first four head coaches on The Herd, revealing two former NFL head coaches, a veteran college coach, and a World Bowl champion. Those head coaches are Mike Riley for the New Jersey Generals, Todd Haley for the Tampa Bay Bandits, Kevin Sumlin of the Houston Gamblers, and Bart Andrus of the Philadelphia Stars. Today is a monumental day for the new USFL as we hit the 100 days to kickoff mark, said their president of football operations, Brian Woods. To attract guys like Mike Riley, Todd Haley, Bart Andrus, and Kevin Sumlin to the USFL speaks to the quality of the league we're building. They all share our belief in high-quality spring football, and we're honored to have them lead their respective teams this year. We can't wait to hit the field. USFL, a new American football league owned by Fox Sports, will play its first game April 16th at one centralized location, which they still have not officially announced. They will announce the remaining four head coaches at a later date. Player selection meeting, February 22nd, 23rd, we know about that. Training camps on March 21st, we knew about. And 38 player roster, we knew about. And the seven-member practice squad. So as for exactly who the coaches are, Kevin Sumlin in 13 season as a head coach in college had a 95 and 63 record. He coached Houston for a few years, Texas A&M for a few years, and most recently was Arizona's head coach. He was twice named a conference USA coach of the year and was an SEC coach of the year once. A new league like the USFL provides opportunities for coaches as well as players, and I'm very excited to have this opportunity to be a head coach at the professional level. I love coaching football players, it's in my blood, and there are many, many athletes who are hungry to play high-quality football. I can't wait to build my team and work with them this spring, said head coach Kevin Sumlin. As for Riley, he boasts 27 years of experience, 10 in the NFL and 17 in college. He had stints as the head coach at Oregon State and Nebraska, and he was the head coach of the San Diego Chargers for a couple years in the late 90s, early 2000s. He stated, I'm an excited person now, personally to coach people at this level because I find them to be very hungry. Almost all of them had really successful high school careers and college careers, and they get into a league like this because they love to play and they want to get better. That combination right there is one idea in general. It just makes it really fun to coach. Haley has spent 22 seasons in the professional ranks, including three as the Kansas City head, City's head coach, and has also served as offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, Steelers, and Browns. This is a tremendous opportunity for me to get back into coaching at the professional level, Haley said this week. It's been a while since I led a team on the field, and I've missed it. It's also rare that a head coach, as it was once put, gets to pick all the groceries and fix the meal. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I expect fans to enjoy the competition. Just as an FYI, all these head coaches are going to be technically the team's GMs as well, so all their team is basically them making it. Just know that. Uh, Andres' experience as a head coach includes times with the NFL, Europe's at Amsterdam or Admirals for a few years, the CFL's Toronto Argonauts, the Omaha Nighthawks of the UFL, an offensive assistant for the Titans twice, and a quarterback's coach before, and an offensive assistant in 2013. I'm really looking forward to getting back on the sidelines and coaching a team that I have a hand in creating from scratch, Andres said. There are terrific people who I have a lot of respect for working to develop the USFL, and I expect quality football we present to be first-rate, and I can't wait 
to be to get started. So in terms of those four coaches, if I were going to just say a quick, what would I rank them as? It's, <clears throat> I'd say as those four coaches, I think the biggest question mark is Todd Haley. Todd Haley's career, especially at the end in the NFL, is still very questionable whether or not he's a good mind or not. Yes, he was a Steelers offensive coordinator during the Killer Bees era with Big Ben, Antonio Brown, and Le'Veon Bell. But at the same time, a lot of Steelers fans hated him at the end and were very glad he got fired at the end of the 17th season. And he was only the Cleveland Browns OC for one season, which does say a lot. So I feel like with him, he's either going to make a team that is going to be a top two team in the league or a bottom two. I don't think he's going to be a middle of the road team. I just don't see that. Bart Andrus, I'm not super confident in him either. I think he genuinely can. He's had experience in many other, I guess, second rate leagues, as I guess people would probably call it. I mean, he won a title in the NFL Europe. I mean, he's coached in the CFL and he's had some NFL experience. But honestly, I think the the two best coaches are probably going to be out of these four, Kevin Sumlin and Mike Riley. And here's the reasoning. The USFL is mainly going to try and be a supplemental league, right? So a lot of the guys they're getting are young guys, but they're also going to get guys that are in the NFL that have very little experience and are practice squad guys. So I think genuinely the players that are going to be the best are going to be the players that have experience but are also just talented. And guess what? The coaches that coached mainly in college but have some NFL experience are going to be very well for this kind of team. And because of that, I think Kevin Sumlin, who has been a college coach for a long time in many different areas, should be good. As for Mike Riley, he's been a coach in the NFL and college, and I think he's going to be great too. Those two, I think, are going to be the best two coaches. As for the last story, is another one you find the USL site. USL giving players and staff tuition-free, debt-free college degree program by Jordan Smith. So, Los Angeles, many employers offer tuition reimbursement for workers who further their education. But then there's the USFL. The new Professional Football League announced on Wednesday it would be partnering with Strategic Education's Strayer University and Capella University to offer a college degree program that is tuition-free and debt-free. USFL players and staff will be able to take classes online through Capella or and online and in person at Strayer, according to a news release. We are delighted to partner with Strategic Education, a market leader in online education in the United States, said Edward Hartman, the USFL Executive Vice President of Business Operations. It's quite common for college athletes to leave school early. We do know that they'll leave a couple years early just so they can get drafted higher or can get in the NFL sooner. And then a lot of them would like to go back and end up getting a degree. Athletic dreams often compete with the educational goals, so we are hoping to reduce the burden by supporting the USFL players and staff in their effort to achieve college degrees by proudly offering this free benefit, Hartman said. Both Capella and Strayer are institutionally accredited universities that support busy working adults achieve their academic goals. The news release stated Robert Silberman, executive chairman of strategic education, said the institutions have been educated adult learners for 130 years. The program's flexibility will allow students to pursue associate, bachelor, or master's degrees in business, healthcare, IT, education, and more. We're thrilled to partner with the United States Football League to provide their players and staff with engaging and flexible degree programs, said Robert Silberman, the executive chairman of strategic education. And and it just says some stuff about the SFL and like how the North and South, stuff like that. Each team play 10-game schedule, they'll have that, you know, inaugural season, stuff like that. Overall, I think this is a really cool thing to add. Allowing players to get free college is a great thing, especially when you think about the fact that the USFL is mainly going to try and help the players who either aren't getting their shot in the NFL or are just straight up not good enough for the NFL, but maybe can get good enough for it. And for those players that aren't able to actually get to the NFL level, it'll give them a place to fall back on. It's a really nice thing to add, and I'm glad that they're doing this, as it truly does show that they do care about the players that they're getting which is a great way in building up fan relations and a great way of building up players to come join. Because of the fact that they're allowing people who graduated from high school in 2020 to join, it'll probably get a lot more young college kids to leave college to go to the USFL now to play there, knowing that they will still get a tuition-free degree. 
overall, that's all the news that has come out in the last couple days. It's a decent amount. We finally know a start date for the league. We know some of the head coaches, and we know a new plan. I'm, I think overall they're doing this pretty well. I think they should have announced a division rather than just four coaches, honestly. But hey, it's fine. The four coaches they got, none of them are as big a name as a guy like Steve Spurrier when he got hired in the AAF, but they still got decent names, and I'm kind of excited to see, especially Todd Haley, how he's going to do at this level. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. This has been Zom Fox. If you guys like this content and want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Have a great night.